vulnerability and loss. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Self Love Monday. How are you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author, podcaster, and your uplifting life partner. Now, today's conversation touches home on both the vulnerability and the loss. Uh, today is March 29th, 2021. And on March 26th, a couple of days ago, my mom passed away. Um, for those that don't know my story, I am, I am one of those guys you, you hear when they say a mama's boy, and I'm proud of it. Um, I look at mama's boy, there's a difference between gentlemen who can't make decisions for themselves and their mom is still making their decisions for them. Um, that is, I guess, the essence of what some people mean when they say uh, mama's boy and they're looking at it from a negative perspective. For me, when I use it, those that know me know I am very strong and I make all my, my own decisions. I'll take input from others, but ultimately I'm gonna always make my own decisions. Um, I'm almost a rebel in that sense. Uh, but anyway, I'm saying in the sense that I believe ladies, um, that's really kind of the best way to look for a man is to find what I'm going to define as you, what I consider a mama's boy and what I consider myself to be. And that's a gentleman who has the utmost respect for his mom. Um, if you ever put someone on a pedestal, which you guys know I tell you, you pull people off of pedestals. But if you were ever going to put someone on the pedestal, it would be moms. And here it is at 59, I still, there's certain conversations I would never have in front of my mom because I think it's very disrespectful. Um, I wouldn't cuss in front of her, never have, never will. Um, I just, uh, like I said, you, you, uh, for ladies, one of the things you could do is watch the, the interaction between a, a, a young man and his dad. I mean, his dad, his young man and his mom. And it'll pretty much give you a very strong um, understanding of how he's actually going to treat you. And that's the reason I said, for me, being a mama's boy, uh, a guy you would say is it's kind of a guy that you're looking for. And um, that's not trying to be um, um, arrogant or anything like that. But I just believe that a guy that really um, admires and really cherishes and, and, and looks after his mom is a, is a great characteristic. And also for a lady, uh, someone you, you should look for, honestly. And again, I'm not saying it just for me. I'm just saying it, it's, it's, it's a good demonstration of what you'll get to experience on how he'll actually treat you. If you run across a guy who's very dishonoring, disrespectful to his mom, he's definitely a guy you would probably want to stay away from because your turn's coming. But if he's like that in general, you know me, I believe how you do some things, how you do all things. Um, so, but anyway, during this time period, the vulnerability is being able to accept your, your feelings, your emotions, whatever they may be. Um, I have a lot of the men in, in my family that, you know, of course they're coming to tears and stuff and um, and I've had some and I will have some and, and that's okay. I tell people that's, that's a part of the, the path um, to healing. And you got to allow that to take place. And that's the vulnerability for yourself, not to try to play a role that the world tries to tell you you should play, that you're a man, we don't cry, we, we're strong, we're this and that. Folks, whatever you feel, you feel and you let it out. And if the world doesn't appreciate it or can't understand it, let them take a flying leap. Um, this is about not trying to be uh, a macho man or whatever the case may be or a macho person. Um, it's being able to accept and being vulnerable to what's truly going on and accept the emotions that come along with it. The only challenge that I have and I share with people when it comes to times like this with the loss is that it's one thing to allow the emotions to come out, but there's another thing when the emotions control you and, um, and you start to go into a dark place and 
then you become a, um, a danger to yourself. Always understand your importance, your significance, as I always talk about, and that's why I'm talking about this today on Self Love Monday. Plus, it's the most <laughs> it's the most current uh, conversation I'm having since the loss of my mom. Um, so, of course, that would probably be my topic. You know, would include her. But again, it's it's a it's it's a huge loss. It's not one that I tell people that you ever try. When I tell people you control your emotions, watch the stories that you're right, it's not a thing because some people want to take that as but you're living in denial. It's not denial. It's taking control of the stories that you write, which I always talk about. I could sit here and I could write the stories that she's not going, I'm never going to see her again. And, um, you know, all the different things that we had together, the bond. And I could stay in that arena and keep compounding stories on what's never going to happen. Or you guys have heard me say this story. It's the same way I deal with the loss of my wife, which is going on. Ooh, this year is going on year number seven that I lost her. And we're together for 32 years. But I, I use the exact same story for myself is that I've been blessed to spend 59 years with one of the greatest people that's ever walked this earth. And I had the privilege of calling her my mom. And so I can sit here and I can write the, and, the, and of course we're talking about your thought process. And I can write all the what ifs, the could ifs, the things I didn't do, the things I could have done, why I didn't accomplish this. And I can go on and on. And if I keep writing those stories, I'm going to go down a hole that is not good. It's, um, it doesn't serve you. And I know some people go, well, you got to let it go. No, you, those are stories you don't have to dwell on. Um, you don't have to go into a deep zone. You don't have to be depressed. You don't, I'm not saying you won't get sad. You won't get emotional. You won't cry. You won't have tears. You won't feel the vulnerability that we're talking about. But you don't have to get depressed. Um, you can you can halt that. And the reason I, I say you can halt that is because it, it it doesn't serve you. It doesn't serve the person that you lost. It's not something they would want to see you do. They don't have a challenge with you being sad because they would expect that. But the depression is not something that they would accept or they would be happy to see you going through. And if you did do it, that's not saying if you did it or if you're there that they're looking at you in a negative state. But they are going to tell you to snap out of it and get back into life. And that's why, for me, I kind of use the stories of, that's why I said I was privileged to get 59 years with her and call her my mom. And and I use those 59 years. I think of all the great things that we did and the, the value that she's added to my life. And, and so if I stay in those particular stories, then it'll allow me to smile and it'll allow me to appreciate and be and again stay grateful and that keeps you from going into the um depressed depressed state in which i'm talking about so i really wanted to do this particular video just because i'm saying loss is something that's a part of the human experience and that is something that just happened to me a couple of days ago so i'm i'm, I'm dealing with it i'm i'm, I'm going to um uh, again, focus on appreciating the and being grateful for the time that I did have. And those are things that will keep me on track <clears throat> and keep me out here doing the things that I need to do in order to experience and enjoy the rest of the journey that I have, which is what allows me to, to go do this particular uh, conversation when most people would probably shut down at this point and lock themselves away from the world. And I just... And that's not saying if, if you're one of those people and you feel you need to do that, just make sure you keep yourself in a healthy state of being while you're doing that. If you just needed to reflect and you just maybe don't want to have conversations and talk to people, right? That That's that's okay if that's who you are. And, and, and again, some people need that. They need that space to get their head right. As long as that's where you're at, but you're not moving into the danger zone where you start to ask the questions on, um, what does my life mean? And you don't know say you turn it inwards. 
does my life any have any more purpose? Uh, why would, you know, um, God, and again, I'm not trying to tell you what to believe, but why would God take my, this person? And you, and you start to doing all those kind of things. Well, now you're moving into a, a, an area that, that can be, become dangerous. The thing is to recognize that this is a part of the journey. We're all going to leave here. Um, and, and again, like I said, for me, it's be grateful, be vulnerable um, to your emotions, be vulnerable to the fact that those around you will need your help, need your support at this time. And being vulnerable enough to uh, allow them allow them into your arena to heal, to help you with the healing if you need it. And again, not um, closing people out because, again, I think uh, that's not necessarily a great place to stay in when you start to close off. Um, but again, like I said, if you need it quickly, and hopefully I'm not rambling here, but if you need it uh, as a quick healing for yourself, and, and I mean real quick, it's not something you want to stay in for a long period of time if you're isolating yourself. But be vulnerable enough to let others come into your life um, and help you. And at the same time, being vulnerable enough to be open to allow them to come to you and help them. Um, again, this is this is a time where, you know, I have family calling on their way. You know, people are going to be coming into town and, um, you know, we're planning what 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 is what are the steps that we do next? So so the wound is 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 new. It's a new wound. It's uh, it's one we're going to be we're going to be strong. We're going to we're going to walk through. And um, but again, I didn't want to put off having conversations because those that know me know that's not something I'm going to do. I'm always going to push through whatever whatever crosses my path. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, I believe that's what we have to do. Um, we're going to be here. We have to push through. And that comes from watching the stories that you write. Recognize if the stories that you're writing are serving you or if the stories that you're writing writing or taking you into a uh, a place you, you don't need to be, a place that's not good for you, a place that could actually get you sick and head you in the wrong direction. And again, that's not something they would want. And, and I know from a mom, she would expect me to go out here and to keep fighting, to keep moving forward. Um, it's what she has placed in my life to be strong and uh, and this is a time to show that I learned the lesson and, and to even make her more proud. And again, for me, kind of the stories that I write is uh, I don't put a finality to this. Um, I think for a lot of people, what hurts them is the finality that is all over. Um, I'll never be with them again. And again, I'm not trying to tell people what to believe. But if you believe that they're always here, and I believe that. I believe physically she's not here. The same thing with Terry, that they're not here. But I believe spiritually they are. And they'll always be here and they'll always speak into my life and they'll always have input. And And if you're open to that conversation, you will see and hear things that you go, <laughs> I hear you. That was you. I know, Mom. That I, I hear you. Or in this case with Terry, same thing. I'm like, thank you, dear. I hear you. And again, for those ladies that hear me say that, don't think that means I haven't moved, moved forward and, and that makes you a person that wouldn't be able to get into relationships. No, relationships are relationships. The relationship I have with my wife, the relationship I have with my mom has nothing to do with the relationship that I'm going to have with the, the, the next lady that moves the rest of this journey with me. They're all, all of our relationships are individual relationships and you, and you act according to that particular relationship. So anyway, um, I hope I didn't ramble too much today and I wanted to, again, speak on being vulnerable to your emotions, being vulnerable to the situation, being vulnerable to those that are around you um, because I think the vulnerability allows you to grow, allows you to be a servant, um, and no greater time for that to be tested than when you lose a loved one. And for me, there's no bigger loss. Um, Terry and my mom are my, two, my top two girls. And they're both gone. So, but we'll move forward. 
because I know if not, and I, I say that all the time, um, I, I used to say Terry's going to slap me in the back of my head, but now I got it coming from both sides because um, my mom was going to pop me on the other side of my head if, if I'm not. So I'm going to get it both from both sides of the head if I don't be strong and move forward. And being strong doesn't mean trying to play macho. Being strong is understanding that this is a part of the journey, buckling up and saying, okay, let me go out here and continue to move on, <coughs> excuse me, with the rest of this journey, making them even more proud because realizing they are still watching and I want them to still be proud of what I'm doing because if not, I'm gonna get popped on the back of my head <laughs> now from both directions. So anyway, as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Um, run on over to ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, that's ronsimplifiedmyers.online. You can check out all the things that I got going. And, and folks, remember, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. Take the loss. Understand it's a part of the process. Um, cry, roll on the floor, hit the pillow, scream, do whatever you got to do. Let those things out. Don't worry about the um, what the world, how the world may react. You don't have to show up at the service because I'm not one that's going to show up at service with glasses because I don't want the world to see me be anymore. I really don't care. Um, you have to be able, and to me, that's what I call strength. And if we're going to use that label, which you know I don't use, but if we're going to use that label, being a man, being a man means I'm. I, this is me. This is who I am. Tears want to want to come. They're going to come. I ain't got time to worry about how you feel about me crying and go. He's weak or he's not a man. That's your issue. You get to deal with that. So, and I'm saying that to you to be strong. Um, and to walk through this journey, and that's going to be your healing process. When you don't play games with more, most important yourself and let the world see you as you are, and then that lets you know who you could keep in your life. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care and enjoy the rest of your journey. All right. Bye-bye.